This is a photo of Jay arriving at my home. If you're interested in getting rid of radon, follow us through the installation okay. procedure. Jay, the reason I called you is one of my neighbors had an issue with, with radon, which she told me about, and I thought maybe I'd better check my house. So I, I did a home radon test, and, it, and the numbers came back kind of high. Okay. So uh, we'd like to put our house on the market sometime in the future, and I know that that's become part of the process for home inspection and we just need to do something about it and I heard you're the guy that, that's the expert so tell me what we're going to do and how we can alleviate this problem. Okay well um, first of all what, what did the test come back at? Uh, it averaged about 20 picoliters. Okay all right um, that yeah, it's relatively high the the uh, four is the standard four is, or, yeah, yeah. four is the upper limit for the lower limit for, for actually doing something about mm -hmm. it. Uh, EPA says if it's over four, you should do something about it. Okay, and I understood. All right, so the most common method for taking care of radon is to, essentially, the radon comes up through the floor. Right. It doesn't come in, in through the sidewalls all that much, but it comes up through the floor. Okay. So what we're going to do is drill a hole through the floor. All right. To access that space mm -hmm. where the radon's being generated. We're going to put a pipe in there, and then we're going to run that pipe outside the house through a fan, and that will essentially put a negative pressure under that floor, okay. and it's going to give the radon an alternate way out of the house, Good. rather than coming through your basement. Um, does that work all the time? It, yeah, it, it, you know, it really to a certain degree depends on the, how tight the soil is under the floor. Okay. The whole, I don't think we'll have an issue with our house. Okay. The whole game is, is uh, moving air, but you can yeah, always... Because it's uh, all loose stone down there underneath the, cause the type of foundation we've got. So we should mm -hmm. have good air, air circulation, good. which I guess is important. Mm -hmm. uh, then the next issue is how we're going to hide the pipe. Okay. That's, that's key. Can we talk about that? Yeah, we can. All right. Uh, typically, there's one or two ways to run the pipe. We either run it out to the outside of the house through the rim joist. The fan is mounted outside the house, mm -hmm. and then the pipe runs along the outside of the house up above the edge of the roof. Okay. Um, depending upon the kind of construction you've got, um, that is a pretty common way to do it. You know, if you've got a multi-story house, yeah. and there's no way to run the pipe through the, the building itself right. without putting it through a living room or a, 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 the middle of a room, then you've got to go outside. Now, if you have you have a detached garage here, I noticed. Yeah. Is there any living space above that garage? No. And does the garage border on this on the cellar? Yeah. Good. So this is good. We can actually go from the basement into the garage. Okay. Up above the garage into this into the attic space above the garage. Well, then it the won't show on the outside. That's right. good. The fan will be mounted in okay. that space. Okay. And there'll just be a pipe penetrating the roof, just like the plumbing pipes that okay. penetrate the roof. All right, let's see if we can do that. Okay, sure. Okay, so this is where we're going to go up through right here. And then Sorry, we're going to put a hole in the ground right in this area and then run a pipe up and come right. through the sill and then come out in the garage upstairs. Right. Since there's, right. Since there's no footing, essentially, this is sitting right on the stone, we can be fairly close. To the, to the wall. So right. normally we'd come out about 14 inches okay. away from the wall to yeah. avoid the footing. So then we're gonna we're gonna run that pipe up into the attic. Yes. And I'll show you in a second where that's gonna go. Okay. What I've done is I've measured from the outside wall to get an approximate location of where I want to put that penetration through the wall. Now I'm gonna go and drill a pilot bit, a pilot hole to uh, see exactly where I am. Right, gotcha. And I can adjust it a little bit either way. Sure. Okay, so. Proceed. Exactly, okay. All right, so what we're gonna do is the hole in access to the basement. I've already drilled the pilot hole, I know where it's coming out. Through wall number one. Oh. Are you going to be able to reach through both of those walls? I do so. Oh, all right. You learn, you know. You get out there one day and you're like two inches shy. 
So we have here is a fire stop on the, uh, that goes, it's a collar that goes around the pipe. And that's required by code because essentially the garage is a separate fire area and it's all covered with fire resistant sheetrock. And this is required in case there's a fire in the garage, it will expand as the pipe melts and close off that hole. And there's going to be one here and there's going to be one on the ceiling. Excellent. Okay. Go ahead. Good, so now we're going to put a fitting on this. The fitting is an inch and a half deep, so we're going to measure just a little less than an inch and a half. Okay, shoot. Okay. You'll notice that the, the pipe we use is thick. You know, this is Schedule 40 PVC. There are several advantages to that. One, it's not flimsy, so that if you knock against it, it's not going to break or crack. Number two, it does have some ultraviolet protection, so that when it's mounted outside, it doesn't discolor and it doesn't deteriorate from the UV rays. Epoxic PVC cement. That way, you and I don't have to sit here and smell the fumes. Yeah, I know that stuff forms a pretty good bond once it, and it sets pretty quickly too, doesn't it? Does. Well, this, this actually gives you a little bit more working time than your standard PVC. Was that the pipe? Yeah. Okay. Alright, so we have the, the pipe that's coming in from the garage, and it goes through a 90 degree fitting. The uh, pipe is then going to drop down here along, this, along the foundation. And then it'll angle out to right about here. And we'll core a hole down through the concrete to access the space under the floor. So we're going to use a corbit. And what the corbit does is it, it cuts a very round hole in the floor. Now the advantage of the corbit is you don't create stress risers in the con concrete. It's places where cracks can form because the, uh, the corbit makes a perfectly round hole. No angles. Excellent. So we've got a hole down through the concrete now, and that's very smooth. And so that, yeah, as I said before, it won't contribute to cracking of the concrete. What we're going to do now is actually remove some of the fill from under the under the floor. That gives the air a place to go to. You right. might imagine if the if the pipe was right tight up against the stone, even even though it's stone, you wouldn't want to get a lot of air movement. Okay. So we create a void space. Right. So this is the fitting that, that goes into the floor. It provides the seal between the pipe and the floor. Um, the, the hole in the floor is four and a half inches, slightly larger. This is four and a half inch PVC. It's a little loose fit with just the pipe in there, so we put this gas gasketing material there to tighten the fit. And we'll actually pound it in with a hammer so it's a nice tight fit and then we'll seal around it with caulking. Good. Well sealed. Yeah, I can believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'll caulk around it to, to just ensure a better, a better fit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Good. Let me, uh, let me do attic again. All right. Okay, good. So we can see the pipe running up out into the garage. Yeah, that's a nice clean installation. Yeah, yeah. We like to make it look neat. You know, it, it is that. Yeah. I don't want any of these things looking like they've been installed by Rube Goldberg. <laughs> good. Just a minute. Okay. Okay. Go. So this is the fan. This is what's actually going to be mounted up in the attic, and it will, uh, it will create that negative pressure that we're looking for under the floor. Now this happens to be a high flow, low suction fan. So because the material under the floor is relatively porous, we don't need to use a fan that generates a lot of suction. We use a fan that will generate some flow and actually move that air in situations where the, the soil is tighter, um, we would use a, a higher suction fan to create more of a negative pressure.
And this will, again, as I said, this will be mounted in the attic. And it will be fixed to the pipe below and above with these rubber vibration dampening couplings. So, What's the service on it? The, uh, the fan itself is guaranteed unconditionally for five years. So if it fails Terrific. within five years, we'll replace it. And there's no labor for that either. And, uh, but I've seen them 10 years, 15 years installed. Good. So, ought to last for a long time. Hopefully. After Jay finished cutting the hole through the roof, he installed a riser that carries the gases out to the atmosphere. Notice how well it matches the other risers on the back of the house. Here you see the pipe that comes out of the basement on its way up to the attic for exhaust. It blends pretty good with the rest of the garage and it's hardly noticeable. <laughs> 